quickly uh, to link today's topic with what we have last week about Bay'at al-Aqaba. I said the pledge of al-Aqaba happened through three years. The first year was just a preparation for the Bay'ah. Second year was the first Bay'ah of Al-Aqaba or, or, or the first pledge of Al-Aqaba. And third year was the second Bay'ah of Al-Aqaba or the second pledge of Al-Aqaba. Uh, last week we talked about the first one, inshallah, today we're going to cover the second one, inshallah. What happened is these are, yani, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, wanted after, right after the, you know, hard time that the Prophet ﷺ have uh, had in Mecca after the death of Abu Talib and the death of Khadija, right away Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the Prophet ﷺ in the journey of Al-Isra wa Al-Mi'raj. Then he came back with lots of hope and energy to continue delivering the message or conveying the message. As I said last week, يعني جاء من شرح الصدر you know, he got like quick and direct support from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue the message. Prophet never left any occasion or situation without conveying the message. If you guys remember what Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam had in, in the jail with the two uh, boys, you know, when they asked him, you have to take advantage of any situation that you are in. Somebody is asking you, for example, he saw you praying and he's asking you not to say, you know what, this is something that we do in Islam. Take advantage of that question and make that. Invite people, convey the message, make that thing clear to them. Somebody, you know what, is asking you about a certain uh, clothes that you have or the way that you do this or you why don't you eat this why don't you eat, why don't you celebrate Christmas with us you ask you answer them why well, by the way why don't we celebrate Christmas we have the Christmas part tomorrow inshallah in the masjid if you guys want to. right so amen we have a Christmas okay so why don't we okay ask Suleiman after okay why 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 like this is a very important thing. Why we don't celebrate Christmas? If somebody asks you, Omar, this at school, why, why, what, what's your answer? We have to eat. Very good answer. The Prophet ﷺ said in a, in a clear hadith that we have only to eat. And this is, can be said easily to anybody. And as a Muslim, I celebrate these two things only. Eid al-Adha, Eid al-Fitr, Eid al-Adha. And there are many things to say about it. I mean, what's Christmas? And it can go in details. But take any advantage. You said that Sayyidina Yusuf salam, these two boys, they're asking him about a dream. Imagine about a dream. And then before answering or explaining, interpreting the dream for them, what he did. Do you guys remember? Huh? He gave da'wah. He said, Ya sahiba yisijnu, aw yisijni, arbabu mutafarriquna, no, come here. So he started making da'wah, asking them to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the end, everybody in jail was Muslim. The same, the Prophet after he came back from the journey of Al-Isra al Mi'raj, he started doing this da'wah everywhere. And we said that last week. He started meeting people and said that, anybody to, to, to take me to his people to deliver, to convey the message. Every time, especially the Muslim or the season of Hajj, until he met six people from Al, uh, from Medina, from Yathrib, from Al Aws Al Khazraj, and he started talking to them. He offered them the message. They accepted that, and he offered them Islam. They accepted Islam. They became Muslim. And we said that last week. For a full year, they went back to Yathrib. Was not Medina yet and then start talking to their families about it. In one year, as the, 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 the came, as came in the seerah, every house in Yathrib had at least a Muslim. Then they came in the next year. That all we talked about last week. Twelve people, the six becomes twelve. They came, but now they're not coming just to make Hajj. They're coming to meet with the Prophet Wasallam to announce their Islam and to give bay'ah. Then the Prophet ﷺ, they meet 
or they met with the Prophet وسلم, at Al Aqaba, close to Mina, and they give him the first bay'ah, the first pledge of Al Aqaba. What was, what were the conditions for that pledge? What are the conditions for that pledge? What did he uh, stipulate on them? What did he tell them? أو يعني الحديث والآية جت على النساء والحديث على الرجال بايعوني على ألا تشركوا بالله شيئا ولا تسرقوا ولا تزدوا ولا تقتلوا أولادكم ولا تأتون ببهتان تفتروه أو تفترون بين أيديكم وأرجلكم ولا تعصوني في معروف فمن وفى فأجره على الله ومن أصاب من ذلك شيئا فعوقب به في الدنيا فهو له كفارة ومن أصاب من ذلك شيئا فستره الله فأمره إلى الله إن شاء عذبه وإن شاء عفعه. These are the main conditions and stipulations that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم talk on them. All relevant to you. He didn't ask them until now about anything. يعني concerning him صلى الله عليه وسلم. Just give me the pledge that you don't do the following. You don't do shirk. You don't kill. You don't steal, you don't kill your kids, you don't commit adultery, you don't uh, 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 come or uh, uh, come up with or come uh, with the slander, you don't uh, 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 you don't disobey me. Then if you do that, the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you break that bridge between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah covers you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala conceals you, you're fine. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're up, it's up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then they left, they went back. But the Prophet sent with them Sayyidina Musa'ib ibn Umayyah. What's the relationship between, uh, the, uh, what's the, the common thing between Sayyidina Musa'ib ibn Umayyah and the Prophet Is there any, any? Yes, يعني if you wanna, يعني this is something nice to know. Sayyidina Musa'ib ibn Umayyah, Umar, how did you say that? Even if you have your hands, you have your hands. Ask Sulaiman about your hands. فسيدنا مصعب بن عمير was the closest in 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 يعني in it was very close to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in outside appearance. If you see him, as if you see the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. That's why in the Battle of Uhud, إن شاء الله we'll talk about it. The Quraysh people or the Kuffar they claimed that they killed the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. However, they didn't. But the one who was martyred was سيدنا مصعب بن عمير رضي الله عنه. So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم sent sent Sayyidina Mus'ab ibn Umayyah with them to Yathrib to teach them Quran and to teach them the religion. Before the end of the year and before the coming season of Hajj, Sayyidina Mus'ab ibn Umayyah came to the Prophet came and he told him, Ya Rasulullah, Asbahat al-Madina or Asbahat Yathrib muhayya'a liqudumi. So the, the Yathrib is paved now for Islam and Muslims. You can come now easily. Now every house has a new, يعني, uh, a new, uh, or a Muslim. Not only a Muslim, by the way. Hatta even when you read about it, it's not only has a Muslim. Mecca has lots of Muslims. But they used to hide their Islam. Here it's different. In Yathrib, a Muslim who announces his Islam. Which means it's big difference. Now you can live in a Muslim place, in an Islamic uh, uh, city. Everybody announces Islam. Nobody is uh, scared to, to say that I'm a Muslim. However, in Mecca was was very hard. So he came, Sayyidina Musa ibn Umayyah, and then right after him, a group of Al Aws wal Khazraj, they came to the Prophet وسلم, to give him. The second pledge of Aqaba. So now, 70 people came to Bay'at al Aqaba Thaniya fi nafs al Makkah. ممن كان معهم كان معهم اثنان من كبار الصحابة سيدنا جابر ابن عبد الله الأنصاري وسيدنا كعب ابن مالك الأنصاري. both of them they have the two main 
أو عندهم الروايتين الأساسيتين أو الرئيسيتين في عقب في بيعة العقبة الثانية. So 70 of the صحابة or 73. Okay. سيدنا جابر بن عبد الله. His narration says or states 70 of the صحابة from Yathrib to Mecca to give the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم the, the second pledge of عقبة. And Sayyidina uh, Ka'b ibn Malik, his, his narration states 73, two of them were, were women. They came to give bay'ah to the Prophet ﷺ. Listen to Sayyidina Jabir in details, and I'm going to summarize what Sayyidina Ka'b ibn Malik said because it's a little bit longer. فيقول Sayyidina Jabir ibn Abdullah, رضي الله عنه, مكث رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عشر سنين في مكة يتبع القوم في بيوتهم في عقاف ومجنة وفي المواسم في منى يقول من ينصرني من يأويني أو من يؤويني لأبلغ رسالة رسالة ربي وله الجنة. So سيدنا جابر بن عبد الله he said that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم spent ten years. Oh I said the bay'ah the pledge of al aqaba took three years. So you can consider that before al aqaba ten Full 10 years, the Prophet ﷺ spent in Mecca calling the people. Actually, the hadith saying chasing. Chasing people. In Uqab wa Mujana. What's Uqab by the way? The most famous marketplace for them. Uqab is, you know, I don't see something here like Superstore. Huh? Wisdom in the mall. Sah. Sah. Western Minton Mall, for example. Everybody's there. Imagine that you go now to Western Minton Mall and say, La ilaha illallah. I don't know you. Okay? You say, La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Not nothing. You guys know the hadith of entering the, the marketplace. Who can remind me with that hadith? Yeah. Whoever entered the marketplace and said, La ilaha illallah. Mahdaw la sharika la. Lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-ham. Yuhi. Wa yimut wa ma'ala kulli shayin qadeem. Wa huwa hayu al-mut wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadeem. Oh, be the khayr wa ala kulli shayin qadeem. Sorry, ya shaykh. Tasmak al-Nahr. Ameen. So the Prophet of the Prophet says, He says, He says, Alf Hassan. It's a great hadith, by the way. And you won't know why. Because when you go to the, when you go to the mall, or the marketplace, you think all about the deals and the prices, and you know what, I want to get this and go back. Nobody think too much about remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why the Prophet said that when you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that place, it's a great reward. Anyway, the Prophet used to chase the people in Uqaf and Mujna, and in seasons, especially the season of Hajj, or Hajj, in Mina. Who, who imagine, Again, I said it last week. The Prophet ﷺ is offering himself to the people. That's what Sayyidina Jabir ibn Abdullah said clearly. Who's able to support me? Who's able to give me protection? Until I deliver, I can bear the message. And he will get jammed. Nobody listened to him. As I said even last week, Even the, 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 the earliest... يعني أوتسايد مكة. Somebody is going to مكة. His people. The main advice that he gets from his people. احضر فتى قريش. Be aware of the boy of قريش. محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يفتنك. يعني don't listen to him. هم they know that anybody will listen to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. He will he will obey him. He will follow him. So please don't listen to him. خلاص. احضر فتى قريش لا يفتنك. حتى بعثنا الله إليه. In the Jabir, يقول, until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent us to him from Yathrib. We came from Yathrib for Hajj. But what happened that we met him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. حتى بعثنا الله إليه من Yathrib. فآوينا ونصرنا وأسلمنا معه. وكان الرجل يسلم فيعود إلى قومه ويقرأ القرآن. فيعود إلى قومه فيسلمون بإسلام. So until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent us to him, we give him support, we believed in him, we, we accepted Islam. Until everybody accepted Islam, he used to go back to Yathrib. All of his family accepted Islam. حَتَّى لَمْ يَبْقَى Sayyidina Jabir ibn Abdullah يقول حَتَّى لَمْ يَبْقَى فِي يَثْرِبْ دَارًا إِلَّا وَفِيهَا رَهْطٌ 
يعلنون إسلامه رهط how many ها يعني أنت بتتكلم around five seven كده until look it's not only one person in every house he said until every single house of مك of مدينة of يثرب has few Muslims who announce their Islam who say that we're Muslim they don't they're not shy they're not scared to say that we are Muslims يعلنون إسلامه فاجتمعنا وقلنا لبعضنا البعض فاتمرنا يعني then we get together the people of Yathrib now we're Muslims and we're good in number إلى متى أو حتى متى نص جيكدا حتى متى نترك رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يعني يطرد في الجبال ويخاف من قريش until when we're leaving the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is like fleeing from the people of مكة and staying away scared of them we need to do something فجئنا سبعين رجلا then we came seventy people we came together سبعين رجلا that's the reward سيدنا جابر بن عبد الله سيدنا كعب بن مالك قال ثلاثة وسبعون منهم امرأة سبعين رجلا then we came أمين is asking is it only men or men and women now this is the men بيعت الرجال سبعين رجلا we came seventy people we came together to meet with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم فواعدناه عند العقبة في رواية سيدنا جابر في رواية سيدنا كعب بن مالك بيفسر أكثر يعني هم سبعين مش كلهم أهل اليثرب ففي كثير من المشركين معهم يعني يقول أنهم جاءوا يعني يتخفون ويتسللون تسلل القطع عشان يعني تسلل القطع يعني بيت بي بي كذا يعني they are just sneaking to meet with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم unless يعني and they were worried that the people who came with them from Yathrib to recognize that they are Muslims and they're meeting with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم سيدنا جابر that said that we came and we give the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم we promised the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم to meet him at مينا العقبة at العقبة in مينا فأخذنا نذهب بالرجل والرجلين so we start going one and two, يعني two people, one one man, two men, until we get together and we meet the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم at العقبة. فقال قلنا نبيعك يا رسول الله فقال بيعني ثم ذكر الحديث. Then we offered the بيعة. We're here to give you the pledge. And then the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, give me the pledge on the following, the same statement that we had last week or actually last year. The same pledge that they had in the first year. So what's the difference between the first bay'ah and the second bay'ah then? It's the same. No, there is idafa here. هناك إضافة. There is addition here. سيدنا سعد بن زورا. What's the main bay'ah by the way? Because before I move, what's the main bay'ah that I'm talking about? Huh? What's the main the main statement of bay'ah? Yeah, yeah. Here, we're not that. That's what we just said. Yeah, but we just said it. I just said it earlier. I need somebody to say it, please. Just think about it. Anybody is able to say it as it is? As came in the hadith? Go, yalla. Yes. ولا تقتلوا أولادكم ولا تأتوه تفترون بين أيديكم ورجلكم perfect ولا تعصوني في معروف يعني six conditions always يعني when you think of بيعة العقبة of or the pledge of العقبة you think of this can يعني not conditions it's يعني it's obligations stuff that you have to do but again it's the same statement in the first bay'ah, the same one in the second bay'ah. The Prophet ﷺ told them, بَيْعُونِ عَلَىٰ أَلَّا تُشْرِكُوا بِاللَّهِ شَيْءٍ And then he told them all of them. Then one of the, حتى إن سيدنا جابر بن عبد الله يقول, فَقَامَ إِبْنُ زُرَارَ وَهُوَ أَصْغَرُهُمْ حِينَ إِذْنِ Then some, one of the 70 people, actually the youngest. His name is Sa'd ibn Zurara. فَقَامَ مَهْلًا يا أهل يثرب 
والله ما ضربنا أكبال الإبل إلا ونحن نعلم أنه رسول الله وإن نعلم أننا بذلك مفارق هؤلاء القوم ومعرضون أو معرضوا أنفسنا للقتل يعني ويعني الموضوع يبقى صعب يعني فهل أنتم على يعني فهل أنتم قوم تصبرون وأجركم على الله أم أنتم تخذلون رسول الله فقالوا له ما لك يا أبا زرارة والله لا ندع هذه البيعة أبدا ولا نسلمه أبدا فقال صلى الله عليه وسلم بيعوني على على الطاعة الإضافة هنا بقى على الطاعة والنصرة والحرب ولذلك سماها سيدنا مصعب ابن عمر الله يا جماعة هذه الأمور لن تتعلمها أبدا بالفهلوة لا بد أن تقرأ ولا بد أن يعني تبذل مجهود حتى تقف على هذه الحقائق يعني هذه ليست يعني حتى في في دراسة الأصغر ما كنا نتعلمها بالتفصيل يعني رطوش وعليك أن تذهب وتقرأ وتتعلم وتقف أمام هذه الأحداث. What I'm trying to say in, in Arabic now is that you cannot just get this information, uh, you know what, because you're you're Muslim. You have to go and you read and you learn and when you listen you concentrate because this is your history. This is a great thing that you so you should be so proud of. That's what the Prophet ﷺ had at the beginning. And if you have any hardship now when you think about this. You have no nothing comparing to. يعني imagine that the Prophet ﷺ has this situation is in his country, in his hometown, and he is seeking the help from other people to come and to help him with with his people, his relatives. ف anyway back to what Sayyidna Saad ibn Zurara said. He said that all people of Yathrib, hold on. Now we give the bayan, but you have to be careful. We're not joking now. It becomes so serious. When we announce this, it means that we are launching fire and war against the people of Christ, and it might be the result might be the killing of best, the best of you. We might be all killed because of that. Are you ready, or are you gonna just you know put the Prophet ﷺ down and you leave? Then, and he was the youngest of the seventy people. As Sayyidina Jabir ibn Abdullah said, "فقال له القوم then they told him, 'يا يا ابن زرارة, what's wrong with you?" We're here to support the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We will never ever put him down. We're always يعني, committing to the pledge that we give the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. فقال لهم النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told them, Give me three things. More. More than now he's talking about himself. Now he is seeking their protection. Now the difference between Mecca and Medina. Well, in Mecca he was practicing. But he didn't have that protection. He didn't have this himaya, that, that uh, umbrella under which he is uh, able to deliver the message. Now he needs that protection. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi told them, all what I need from you is three things. To pledge that you will provide me with ta'a, you will obey me. And I said that this afternoon when I was talking about the husband and wife, uh, the wife has to obey the husband as long as he's not يعني asking her or ordering her to do anything حرام but يعني when we talk about the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم من يطع الرسول فقد أطاع الله ما يجي لك واحد عبيط ويقول لك أنا مش عاجبني الحديث ده والحديث ده doesn't make sense وأنا مش فاهمه ومش عارف من المفروض ما يطبقش علينا دلوقتي أقول له أنت عامل حاجة مش فاهم حاجة أصلا حتى أنت القرآن نفسه ما أنتش مؤمن به إذا لم تؤمن بهذه الآية إذا لم تؤمن بالحديث فأنت لم تؤمن بهذه الآية. الله سبحانه وتعالى says that whoever obeys the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he is obeying Allah سبحانه وتعالى. So when somebody comes and says you know what you know what this hadith doesn't make sense to me, I'll tell him you're not obeying Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Don't tell me now you're following the Quran and you don't follow some of the Sunnah. No, no. If you don't follow the Sunnah, you're not following the Quran and this is a different topic that we covered I think long time ago. Anyway, so number one, give me طاعة. بايعوني على الطاعة أنا قلتها والنصرة والحق number two support نصرة give me support you support me against any of my enemies and number three والحق if I have to be in war you're with me فبايعوه على ذلك طيب that's the narration of سيدنا جابر بن عبد الله سيدنا كعب بن مالك has lots of details in describing 
the situation of the people of Yathrib when they were going to meet with the Prophet ﷺ. As I said earlier, he is telling, you know, he is informing us about the, yani how they even left Medina or Yathrib and they tried to hide yani, that they were going to that. They are just going with the people, the, 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 the Mushriqeen of Yathrib to meet with uh, or to just uh, perform pilgrimage. They are not going for anything, so they hide that. And they went. They came and they meet with the Prophet ﷺ. As he said, 73 people, two of them, they were women. We met with the Prophet ﷺ. We gave him the pledge. And then uh, 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 the Prophet ﷺ asked them in that riwayah for a condition or a request. You can put it this way. So give me the pledge that you protect me from what you protect uh, your wives and your kids against Ufra. Yani you, 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 you will consider me one of you. They didn't give him the pledge to the Prophet Sallallahu One of the people of Yathrib stood up and said, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Muhammad, you know that أننا بيننا وبين القوم حبال نحن قاطعوها. We will know that inshallah later on inshallah if Allah subhanahu wa taala gives us life. Who were the dwellers of of Yathrib at that time? Mean. The Aus and the Khazar. Mean and mean ten. The Yehud. So you're talking about three main tribes of Yehud of Jewish of Jews living in. In Yathrib at that time with Al Aws and Al Khazr. For this man of the companions who accepted Islam and give the pledge, he told the Prophet, ﷺ, you know that we have ties with the Jewish people and we're going to be cutting these ties. And we're so worried that if you, if we give you support and you become strong, that you leave us alone and you go back to Mecca. And we're, we're worried. And he was so honest. Then the Prophet. ﷺ, and he told them, and he, uh, which means, I don't remember the text, but it, it means that no, we're, we're, we're together, we're gonna be, I'm gonna defend you as you defend me, and this will happen later on, and we will explain that more, inshallah. The Prophet asked them, guys, follow with me, ask them to choose 12 naqib from them, and he, to get me out of the 73. Get me 12 people to be يعني, the main, the leaders of the group that came. فَخَرَجَ إِلَى النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ إِثْنَا عَشَرَ نَقِيبًا فَبَيَعُوهُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ And then they were the main people talking to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. ثُمَّ قَالَ رَجُلٌ Let me conclude with this. I will conclude with this inshallah ta'ala. ثُمَّ قَالَ رَجُلٌ مِنْ أَهْلِ يَثْرِبْ بَعْدَ الْبَيْعَ مُبَاشَرَةً لَوْ أَرَدْتَ يَا رَسُولَ الله لتحولنا على قريش ناو الآن بسيوفنا فقال له النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا لم نؤمر بذلك بعد يعني right away one of the people of Yathrib said that now right now if you order us we'll just go back to the people of Quraysh with our uh, swords and we start uh, fighting them then the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم told them not now we're not ordered to do that now in the morning and this is يعني Something funny about it. Oh, well, the Prophet ﷺ told them, no, until now we have to hide it. You are in Mecca, so you have to hide it. When you go to Medina, when you go to Yathrib, announce it. But in Mecca, you have to hide it. فَجَاءَ أَهْلُ قُرَيْشِ الْمُشْرِكُونَ مِنْ قُرَيْشِ جَاءُوا إِلَى تَجَمُّعَ الْأَوْسِ وَالْخَزِرَجِ وَسَأَلُوهُمْ عَنْ بَيْعَةِ اللَّيْلَةِ الْمَاضِيَةِ فقال المشركون من الأوس والخزرج كما سيد كعب الملك قال يعني عنهم فقال أقسم المشركون من الأوس والخزرج أنهم لم يعلموا بذلك شيء والمسلمون ينظرون إليهم وما تكلموا يعني اتباعا لأمر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عندئذ ذهب هؤلاء الصحابة إلى يثرب استعدادا لما هو آت استعدادا لأكثر أو لأهم حدث حدث لهذه الأمة من بداية الإسلام وحتى يعني نهاية الدنيا 
استعدادا لهجرة صحابة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم والنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من مكة إلى المدينة. Then as I said, يعني in the morning, the people of Quraysh came. They knew about it. They overheard that there's something happened last night between those people Al Aws and Al Khazraj and the people and Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. So they came to ask them what happened between you and Muhammad last night. So you guys know that some people came from Yathrib to make Hajj. They don't care about Islam. They were not Muslims. So they took an oath that we don't know anything. And the Muslims are observing, are watching. But as the Prophet Sallam told them, you know what? Don't say anything. So they watched what happened and they didn't talk at all. And they left to Medina. They left to Yathrib waiting for inshallah ta'ala next week. Inshallah after Salat al-Isha, we'll be talking about the first flu of uh, uh, migration from Mecca to Medina. Uh, and this started with some of the great Sahaba. Prophet ﷺ didn't migrate yet. We'll talk about this, inshallah ta'ala, next week. Hijratu Ashabu and Nabi, or Hijratu Ashabi and Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, min Mecca ila al Medina. And inshallah ta'ala, tomorrow will be the fiqh class after Salat al Asha. I don't think that we have soccer for this week or the week, the coming week. So we'll have our time, inshallah, with the fiqh tomorrow after Salat al Asha. Uh, I will uh, take uh, comments from Amin as usual. Fadri Amin. of Sayyidina Ka'b ibn Malik, it states clearly that the, the, the one who spoke on behalf of the Prophet ﷺ was Al-Abbas, his uncle Al-Abbas, and he told the people of Yathrib that we're protecting him, we're still protecting him, but you know, out of like their uh, uh, honor and dignity, they were saying that. That's, that's, that's precisely my question, because after, after, after Abu Talib died, because it wasn't Abu Talib personally that was protecting him, it was Abu Hashim. Yeah, Al-Hashim. yeah. So when Abu Talib died, then his brother Abu Lahab took over, and he continued protecting the Prophet and until uh, Abu Lahab. Yes, until until uh, Abu Jahl came to him and asked him to ask the Prophet some questions about Abu Talib, and then uh, the Prophet and asked him uh, gave uh, an answer that was not definitive, but Abu Jahl yeah. uh, kind of interpreted it for Abu, for Abu Lahab, and yeah. then. Absolutely, your point is 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 good. It's true. Like now, the Prophet ﷺ is losing the main protection that he's getting in Mecca. However, my, yeah, however, it's not the the right or it's not the best environment. Even he's getting it from Al Abbas and the Banu ben, Hashim still, Banu Abdul Muttalib still. But it's not the best place to spread. The da'wah. So the da'wah has to find a better place. He, he personally was in danger at that, during, during the, this period, but he only came back because after he sent the messages to different chiefs that they all refused, only, only one accepted uh, was, I think, Mutab ibn Adi. But yet, at, at the end, they were still going to try to kill him uh, before, so was before he, he migrated. So your point now? My question is, did Mutab ibn Adi die before this? And then why did the Abbas say that 
that the Banu uh, Hashim are protecting the Prophet since, since Abu Lahab would do that. Okay, but uh, Abdul, I mean, it's when you look at the, the, the honor of the Arab, he's not going to tell them, you know, just take him. Yani out of like their arrogance and their uh, dignity and their ego, you know what, he's, he's telling that. I didn't like search it that big, you know, but I, I, I don't see any other point except that one. Like he's not gonna just give him to them and say we're, we're withdrawing the protection from our nephew. Allahu <laughs> A'lam. And out of like, however the Prophet couldn't find that big support in Mecca at that time, he has to leave it away. Okay, Zakallah khairan. Hello, we'll see you inshallah tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum.